Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to this week's Mental Health Moment. I'm Jeff Hurley. I'm Camp V's MVP and PSC. I also work with the Andrews Center. Um, the last few weeks, we've been covering the basic concepts of RAP, and we covered hope, personal responsibility. And last, well, last week, we all froze to death. And the week before that, we covered education. So this week, we're going to go right on from that to the fourth concept, which is self-advocacy. And like usual, I'll give you um, the scientific definition, then I'll give you a definition we can actually take home and use. So self-advocacy refers to an individual's ability to effectively communicate, convey, negotiate, or assert his or her own interests, desires, needs, and rights. And to paraphrase that, I believe self-advocacy means to understanding your strengths and needs, identifying your personal goals, knowing your legal rights and responsibilities, and communicating these to others. So why is self-advocacy so important? It's important so that you have the knowledge needed to succeed and are given the chance to participate in mental health decisions and wellness decisions that are being made about your life. There's three parts to self-advocacy. There's knowing yourself, there's knowing your needs, and then knowing how to get what you need. So knowing yourself means understanding your strengths and weaknesses, your passions, your fears, your desires, your dreams. It means being aware of your eccentricities and idiosyncrasies, your likes, your dislikes, and your tolerances and limitations. Knowing your needs is, as you start to connect more with your needs, it can help you understand why they've taken such a back seat in your life so far. When we know why we struggle with something, we put ourselves in a much better position to fix it. Knowing how to get what you need. This means educating on yourself. We talked about education on our, on our last uh, section, and this is directly related to that. It means educating yourself on your audience. The who, the what, the when, the where's, the why's. Each need may be a different formula to its same success. Be adaptable and stay determined. And to close out what self-advocacy is, um, I'm going to give you 10 steps or 10 things that you need to focus on to be a, an efficient and effective self-advocate. Step one, believe in yourself. You're a unique and valuable person. You're worth the effort it takes to advocate for yourself and protect your rights. You can do it. You may need to work on raising your self-esteem to really believe in yourself and become your own best advocate. Two, know your rights. You are entitled to equality under the law. Some of us who have ever had a mental health challenge erroneously believe that we do not have the same rights as others. I did for a while. I allowed people I did not know well and did not trust to make decisions for me, take control of my life, I now have the system in place, so if I'm not able to make good decisions for myself, I now have a system in place for others they know what decisions I would like to make for myself. Three, decide what you want. Clarify yourself exactly what you need. This will help set your own goals and help you be clear to others about what it is that you want and that you need for yourself. Number four, get the facts. When you advocate for yourself, you need to know what you're talking about or what you're asking for. The internet is an excellent source of information. However, you will need to check its accuracy by looking at several different references to see if they agree. Check with people who have an expertise in what you're considering. Ask others who have issues similar to yours. Check references in the library, contact mental health agencies, organizations for information and support. Number five, plan a strategy. Using the information you have gathered, plan a strategy that you will feel will work to get you what you need and want for yourself. Think of several ways to address the problem. Ask supporters for suggestions. Get feedback on your ideas. Then choose to take action using the one that you feel has the most chance of being successful. Number six, gather support. In advocating for what you need and want for yourself, it is helpful to have support from family members, friends, and other people who have similar issues that you're going through. Build a peer support group around yourself for what you're going through. Number seven, target efforts. Who is the person? persons or organizations you need to deal with to get action on your matter. Talk directly with the person who can best assist you. It may take several phone calls to discover which organization or person or leader can actually help you get what you need. Maybe the right person is your spouse or another family member. Perhaps it is the head of the local housing agency, your doctor, a case manager, a vocational rehabilitation counter, or a state legislator. Know what you want and target those efforts directly into getting what you need. Number eight, Express yourself clearly. And those of us who watch this each week with my accent, that's something I always have to work on. When you're asking for what you need and what you want for yourself, be brief. Stick to the point. Don't allow yourself to be diverted or to ramble on with unimportant details. State your concern and how you want things changed. 
If the other person tries to tell you reasons why you cannot achieve what it is you want for yourself, repeat again what it is you want and expect until they either give it to you, help you get it, or refer you to someone else who may be able to help you get what you need. If you feel this may be difficult for you, you may want to role play different scenarios with a supporter or a counselor. It's kind of like practicing for an interview. Number nine, assert yourself clearly. Don't lose your temper and lash out at the other person, their character or the organization. Speak out, asking for what you need and want, and then listen. Respect the rights of others, but don't let them put you down or walk all over you. And number 10, be firm and persistent. Don't give up. Keep up after what you want. Always follow through on what you say. Dedicate yourself to giving it is whatever that it is that you need. I would like to thank you all for joining us this week. If you have any questions, comments on this content, or would like to dig deeper into this content, please contact myself at jhurley at andrewsitter.com or Casey Olson at, camp, at Casey at campvtyler.com or shoot us a call at 903-566-1010 or even better, just drop in Monday through Friday between 9 to 5 here at Camp V in Tyler, Texas. Like always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get our, all of our old, current, and future productions. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. <music>